Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. And this is part two of the buyer's guide. And I'm afraid instead of going out for a drive today, we're going to have a look under the bonnet. And I'll tell you what all the bits and bobs do and what sort of problems you can have with them. Right, let's start at the e-box. This is where the main computers are kept. The V12 has two DMEs, two main computers, and the EML system, which is all in that box, whereas the 840Ci has a single computer for the engine management and a separate computer for the gearbox, which is called an EGS. M70 engine DMEs are volatile, which means that if you disconnect the batteries, then they lose all their settings and lose all the error codes which may have been stored. Whereas the 840Ci with the M62 engine is non-volatile, so you can disconnect the battery on these cars and the error codes and all the adaptations are still stored. The M60 is like the M70, so that that's uh, volatile as well. Right, next thing on, that's the diagnostic connector which we use um, to diagnose problems with the engine and gearbox. I use INPA and it works really well for that. Then we have two tanks, one for the intensive wash and one for the standard wash. On the cars with headlight washing, this tank here doesn't have a lid on it and it can't be filled from there. It has a uh, small hole to allow air to get in there and the main reservoirs in the middle of the spare wheel. Uh, with the ones with headlight washing, you also get a separate pump here. Uh, we have intensive wash on all models, um, and that's a separate fluid which is concentrated, and BMW actually did their own fluid for quite a while, uh, but it was highly flammable, and I think they discontinued it after a while. So that when you use the automatic system, you press the end of the stalk, and this pump runs and you get concentrated fluid onto the windscreen and the wipers start moving. And then it's washed clean with the standard washer fluid. It's a very clever system and works really well. Uh, the normal uh, wash wipe is done by pulling the stalk towards you and in which case the fluid from this tank is used rather than any from this tank. Right, further forward we've got the air filter on the V8s, you just have one air filter, whereas on the V12s, you have two air filters, one each side of the car. And that obviously means quite a few other bits and bobs over there have, have to be moved or not fitted, which is the cruise control and the secondary throttle actuator aren't needed on the V12s. It's a large area air, air filter, and it takes its air from two large air boxes, which are connected together by a central air vent they get their air through the front grills. After this we've obviously got the MAF, mass airflow, and then a flexible pipe to the engine to the secondary throttle body. Expansion tank uh, with its cap. The expansion tank cap has a two bar pressure relief valve fitted to it and so if you start getting problems with the expansion tank cracking or pipes bursting then make sure you replace the cap and that'd be always the first thing to do. They do crack on their own and they've got a floating uh, level sensor with inside, inside it and they often fall off as well, uh, which is usually a good indication that you need to replace the expansion tank. All models have a viscous coupled fan. Um, I go into that in the cooling system episode on my YouTube channel and that explains all how the viscous fan works. And our, under here we've got the main radiator and then the air conditioning condenser and then you've got the ATF cooling radiator and an oil cooling radiator on V8s. Uh, so there's quite a lot of stuff in there and because there's so many radiators within this area they can get blocked up especially you get uh, leaves building up between the radiators which you can't see from the front or from this side and that can reduce the cooling efficiency so it's certainly well worth having a look at that. Right along we go and this is the oil filter and 
uh, oil reservoir. Um, so to change the filter on these engines, you unscrew the cap. But uh, there's a few warnings on my website about doing that because as you remove this cap, the filter should lift up and then soon a, a valve will open at the bottom, which allows the oil to all return back to the engine before the filter is fully removed. But if the filter is stuck in the reservoir rather than to the cap, which often happens with aftermarket filters, then as you take the cap off, the oil hasn't been removed from the canister and the oil just goes everywhere. It makes an awful mess. So uh, follow the instructions on my website about changing the filter um, just in case you get caught out there. Next along we have the cruise control actuator. Uh, it has a Bowden cable that runs all the way around the back of the engine back to the throttle butterfly lever here so you can move the throttle butterfly lever. Um, so that how, that's how it operates the cruise control. V12s don't have a separate actuator because they've got DK throttle bodies and so they don't need a separate app actuator for the cruise control and they don't need a secondary throttle either. Right, so here's the secondary throttle actuator. This uh, opens and closes a throttle butterfly um, via this Bowden cable which runs along here down there and in here there's a throttle butterfly that can quickly open and close to reduce engine power so in normal mode it's open and it will be open at the moment um, and so it doesn't restrict the, air, restrict the airflow at all but when the ASC plus T system needs to reduce power the first thing it does is close this throttle body uh, th the secondary throttle butterfly um, by the right amount to reduce the power to stop the rear wheels spinning. Um, the ASC plus T system also can apply the rear brakes individually uh, to stop a spin and this system works very well. It's the best one I know of on any of the BMWs I've owned and I've owned nine of them now. It's progressive. Um, all you really notice when it's in operation is the ASC light flashes a bit on the dashboard but it's no fuss at all um, and especially compared to the E38 with the Vanos engine, the M62 TUB, um, which uses a different system, this is so smooth whereas the E38 one just seems to cut off all your power, especially when you're sort of halfway out of a junction and you're left there with your foot flat on the floor trying to get across the junction and it just continually cuts right in and cuts all your power. It's a terrible system in those situations. Whereas this one just does it without any fuss. Right, so that's cruise control, secondary throttle, oil filter. While we're here, this is the air takeoff point for the idle control valve, which is used on the V8s uh, to set the idle speed. So in idle mode, and, and there is a special mode for it uh, as registered by the DME. It will shut the main throttle, well, it's shut by you taking your foot off the pedal and then all the air required to run the engine uh, at tick over is taken up through this pipe and to the idle control valve which is a very fast acting armature in it which um, vibrates, um, oscillates and allows a certain amount of air to get through to just enough to keep the engine running. Right, moving around, we've got the central hydraulic system oil here, which is used for the power steering on the V8. And it contains a filter and is a reservoir for the CHF 11S, which is used on the A40. Um, Pentacin was used on the earlier models um, and there's a special way to fill this. You don't fill it right to the top because if you fill it right to the top, um, then the oil can all come flying out uh, when it car sits there and it slowly uses, loses uh, pressure from the brake bomb. And what happens is it slowly returns fluid back to this reservoir and it'll start pouring out. I've had that happen before, sort of rookie error. Right, we've got the auxiliary fuse box here and the fuses in here are used for the ABS system, the ASC plus T. 
runs the pump and it runs the valves on the ASC unit. And behind that we have the brake booster. It's a hydraulic system on all E31 models. And behind that we have the brake fluid reservoir with a level sensor so it will tell you if it's got um, low on fluid, which of course it shouldn't do. Uh, no reason for it to get low on fluid. And here we have the fuse and relay box. There's all sorts of things in there. Um, I made uh, on my website you'll find a relay and fuse finder because it's very difficult to know which fuse and which relay does what. And here's the heater valves. Uh, it's got a pair of heater valves, one for the driver, one for the passenger. And underneath it has an auxiliary uh, water pump, um, which I removed a long time ago uh, because the E31 doesn't have restorative heating, which is its main purpose. And it's just one more thing to go wrong, and it did go wrong. The end fell off it, fell off of it at one point, and I lost quite a lot of coolant. Um, got magnets on my cover to make it easier to take on and off. Um, the original clips are so strong that as you try and pull it off, bits of this cover fall off, and they're no longer available from BMW. So fitting magnets is a good idea.